Hello, and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. Now since this is a short how-to video, I'm going to go ahead and skip my usual introduction. But I will remind you that if you like it, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your colleagues or classmates, put it on the playlist, because that does encourage me to keep making them. On the flip side, if you think there is something I can do better, please leave a constructive comment below the video, and I will try to incorporate those ideas into future ones. So all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now one of the drawbacks sometimes of Microsoft Excel is that it's hard to get the graph you actually want. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I generate my Poisson distribution graphs. And it's actually the same way I gener generate my binomial distribution graphs and things of that nature. So I'm going to sort of show you how I do mine. Now I'm going to assume you have a basic understanding of what the Poisson distribution is. I am not teaching you that in this video. If you need a basic refresher of what that is, please look at my other videos and I walk you through what the Poisson is with several examples in great depth. So this is really about going into Excel and making a nice looking graph that you can then use either in your schoolwork, in reports at work, or whatever purpose you might need for them. Now I'm not saying this is the only way to generate these Poisson graphs, but it is the way I found to get them to look as clean and tidy as I want them to. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So just a refresher of the problem so you know where we're getting our data. And this comes from my previous video. A bank is interested in studying the number of people who use the ATM located outside its office late at night. Now, using the security cameras and transaction reports, what they found out is that on average, 1.6 customers walk up to the ATM during any 10-minute interval between 9 p.m. and midnight. So when they averaged out how many customers came, the number of 10-minute intervals were in that period, they came up with an average of 1.6 customers per 10-minute interval. Now, the original problem had three questions, but for this one, we're only really concerned with the first. And that is, what is lambda for this problem? So in that previous video, I discussed in great detail what lambda is and what it isn't. But we also looked at the probability of exactly three customers walking up to the ATM, or the probability of three or fewer, sort of a cumulative distribution um, in the problem. But for this graph making exercise, we only really need the lambda. So just keep in mind the lambda for this problem is 1.6. Now the graph I used in that video was this one. So in this case, the bottom we have the number of customers that walk up that arrive at the ATM during any given 10 minute period between nine and midnight. So you can see we have zero customers, one customer, two customer, three, four, five, and six, all the way up to 15. Now keep in mind, in theory, the Poisson distribution goes to infinity, but of course the probabilities become so low that they are practically zero. So this graph only goes up to the, the outcome of 15 customers walking up during any given 10 minute period. Now on the left hand side, we have probabilities. So the height of the bar is the probability associated with that outcome. So our lambda was 1.6, so we expect the highest probabilities to be right around where lambda is. So let's go into Excel, let's generate our outcome column and our probability column, and then based on that, we will go ahead and do our graph. Okay, so here we are in Excel. Let's go ahead and set up our spreadsheet to do our very nice, very clean, simple Poisson distribution graph. Now you can see here I've given the spreadsheet a very basic title, Bank ATM Arrivals, and that is the number of customers per 10 minute interval. That way I know exactly what the data is telling me. So you always, should always put a basic title on your spreadsheet. Now the first thing we need to do is put our lambda on our spreadsheet. I'm gonna do over, that over here on the side. Doesn't really matter where. So I'll type in lambda. And then the cell to the right, I'll type 1.6. 
So that just says our lambda for this problem, again, is 1.6. Now we need two columns over here. The first column, we're going to call it outcome. And then the next column, probability. Okay, so just remember, one of the characteristics of the Poisson distribution is that on the high end, the outcomes go theoretically to infinity. So in this case, during any 10 minute interval between 9 p.m. and midnight, we would expect 1.6 customers to arrive at the bank ATM. Now, theoretically, during any 10 minute interval in there, 5 million people could walk up to our ATM. Now, is that going to happen in real life? Is that practical? Absolutely not. It's actually a bit nutty. However, the Poisson distribution really allows for that probability to exist. So, of course, we're not going to take our spreadsheet and look at all the outcomes up to like a million. Because the reality is, if you look at our lambda of 1.6, we know that our highest probabilities are going to be around an outcome of 1 or 2. And then from there, it's going to tail off rather quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we know the outcomes in theory go to infinity. But eventually, the probabilities become so low that they are basically zero. Now, there's no hard and fast rule for when that is. It just takes a little bit of common sense. If we know our highest probabilities are going to be around one or two, then there's no need to find the probability of an outcome of 50. So what we're going to do is be very generous. And we're going to find the probability of every outcome from zero customers to 25. So let's go ahead and put that in our outcome column. So we can have zero customers, one customer walk up, two customers walk up, etc. I'm going to use the auto series func uh, feature here. If I hover over the bottom right of this cell where the two is, and I hit control, at least on a PC, there's command on a Mac, and I drag down to 25. It will fill in all the outcomes up to 25 automatically, which is very handy. Now we want to go ahead and find the probability for each outcome. And of course, that's going to require that we use the Poisson function that's built into Excel. So we'll go ahead and highlight the cell next to an outcome of zero, because that's where we'll start. So then go up to the insert function button, which is up here towards the top. Press that. And we'll search for the function we need. We need the Poisson. So P-O-I-S-S-O-N. Click go. And it will pull up the recommended Poisson function and the Poisson dist function. Now we'll say here the only real difference is that the singular Poisson function is for compatibility with Excel 2007 and earlier. So if you think you might be using a version of Excel that is before 2007, then you might want to select that one. But I'd imagine right now most of you are using 2007 or later, but I'm going to go ahead and use the Poisson dist function because that's the most recent version. Go ahead and click OK. Now if you see here, it's asking for three arguments to go into the function. This is a very handy feature of Excel. It actually tells you what it needs to actually evaluate whatever function you have selected. Now I'll tell you right now, the cumulative down here, that's an either true or false. And you can see it actually tells you down here exactly what that argument is going to do. We are not doing the cumulative probabilities here, so we're going to select false. So false, there we go. Now let's look at the other two arguments. X. Remember, X is our outcome. So for this cell, for this input, we're going to go ahead and highlight where our zero is in our outcome column, because that's next to the probability we're trying to find. Now what do we have for the mean? Remember I said in the previous video that on many occasions, whether it's completely accurate or not, depends on how purist you are, lambda and the mean for a Poisson distribution, or expected value for that matter, are all the same thing. So where it says mean here, it really is asking you for lambda. 
So I'm going to go ahead and make sure my cursor is in the main box right there. Go up and select Lambda, and you can see it selects the F4 cell. Now, I'm going to go ahead, ironically enough, and hit the F4 key. And that makes our mean, or our Lambda, an absolute cell reference. That way we're at no risk of it changing as we drag the formula down the column. So we should have here, depending on how you set yours up, if yours is set up just like mine, the X should be A5, because that is where the zero outcome is. The mean should be the absolute reference of F4. That's where the lambda is. And again, if your lambda is in a different cell, it might be a little bit different. Cumulative is false. Now, before we click OK, it actually gives you what the function is going to be if evaluated with these arguments. And you can see that it tells us that the answer here is 0 0.20189, etc. Now, you need to use your intuition and common sense and ask yourself, is that outcome, does that answer make sense for the outcome of zero customers? Now, of course, with a lambda of 1.6, the probability of getting zero customers during any 10-minute interval is, you know, fairly robust. I mean, there's a very good chance that no one walks up during any given 10-minute period at an ATM at 10 at night. Okay, so that makes sense. Now, if you get some crazy number or an error, you know that you've done something wrong, you need to go back and look at it. But everything looks good, so we'll go ahead and click OK. Now, of course, we can just take this function and drag it down the entire column. And that it copies the function down. What it does is it keeps lambda the same, but it changes the x each time. So at first, x was 0, and then x was 1, then x was 2, as we drag the column down. Now let's look at this probability column just real quick, because it should, again, tell us something commonsensical. If we look right around 8 customers, 7 customers in this range, you can see that for 6 customers, the probability that 6 customers arrive at the ATM during any 10-minute interval is 0 0.00 Four seven, so 0.47 percent. That is a very low probability, and again, that should make sense with a lambda of 1.6. We expect those probabilities at the top around one. So you can see here 0.323 at two, 0.258. This should be the highest, and of course they are. So what we're going to do is we're not going to graph all the way down to 25 because these probabilities at the bottom are so small. I mean, you can see, but look at the scientific notation down here. They're so small, they're practically zero. So we are only going to graph the outcomes from zero to 10. That's gonna be plenty enough to see our graph. Now to do that, we're gonna go ahead and select the outcome and probability headers, and then all the way down to the outcome of 10 customers. Now we're going to go up to insert, and it might seem counterintuitive at first, but you'll see what I mean. We're going to insert a scatter plot. So we'll select the basic scatter, and we get a graph that looks like this. I'm going to make it a little bit larger so we can work with it. There we go. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this little legend over here. Goodbye. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to change the axis down here at the bottom. So I right click on the x-axis at the bottom. I'm only interested in up to 10. So where it says maximum auto, I'm going to change it to fixed and make it 10. Hit close. Now you can see that it only makes the x-axis go to 10. Now I need to change these little markers into bars. So we'll select the data series, right click, and you'll see change series chart type. So I'm gonna select that. Now we'll turn them into bars. So I'm gonna scroll up and then select the top left selection under column. That's just a basic column. Click OK. And there we go. It's a fairly nice looking bar chart. Now we're gonna do a couple other things to make it really nice. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update the title. So we'll say ATM arrival. Poisson probability. 
Now I always put the lambda. Lambda 1.6. So that tells me what we're actually looking at. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these bars a bit. I don't like having the white space between the bars. I don't think it looks very good and it's not often how you see it. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on one of the bars, select Format Data Series, and you'll notice that down here it has Gap Width. If I move that all the way to the left, that eliminates all the gaps between the bars. It makes the graph full. Now I need to be able to see the bars, you know, differenti differentiate them. So I'm going to go to Border Color, Solid Line, and I'm going to select Black. You can make yours whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and select black. Click close. Deselect it. And there we go. So that is a very nice, neat, clean Poisson probability graph that you can then use in your presentations, in your school reports, in your work reports, um, and whatever else you might need them for. Of course, you can copy and paste them into any Office application, and it will pretty much look exactly the same. So again, I just wanted to show you how I generate my, basically all my distribution graphs, but more particular, the Poisson probability graph. So you can see how I get it to look the way it does. And again, you can use this for other um, things you do as well. So let's go ahead and go back into PowerPoint and wrap this video up. Okay, so that's sort of my how-to on how I generate my Poisson distribution graphs and my, for that matter, binomial distribution graphs, I do them all the exact same way as far as graphing them as a scatter plot first, and then I change the scatter plot into bars, and I seem to get what I want. Using just bar charts, sometimes very weird things happen. So this is the way I've come up with doing them. I'm not saying it's the best way or the only way. It's just a quick way that I think is very useful. So again, I hope you found this method useful so you can then use it to put graphs into your reports, into your schoolwork, or whatever uses you might need for these graphs. So again, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.